My name is Mariah and I'm a consultant at Red Hat. Hi, my name is Priti and I'm an architect with Red Hat. We're here to talk to you today about how to improve communication within your Agile team. It seems in the software development world that one team does not always have the same understanding of what it is that their team is actually building. Business analysts describe and think they're describing wonderfully what they expect the system to do, and developers understand and build something completely different. Have you ever had that happen to you, Mariah? Yes, it happens to me all the time. And what I usually suggest for teams that are struggling with this is behavior-driven development, which is also known as BDD. This allows the team to focus on the behavior of a system instead of the implementation details. So when they're going over how to do work for a feature or what features are new with their group, if they start talking about what they need to do in order to get the feature ready, what, what technologies, what um, coding languages to use, that's the implementation details. But when they start talking about the outcome of that feature, that's the behavior, and that's what we want to hone in on with BDD. Exactly. Behavior is what matters to our end user. Teams that focus on the implementation are often the ones that have the most miscommunication in the end. So let's take an ex a look at this behavior on the board. We should always give free shipping on orders over $35 total for members. This is a specific behavior of our system. That's great. We don't talk about technology or what technologies to use or how to use that technology to implement the actual behavior. Additionally, by looking at this, I have so many more questions. What does total actually mean? Is that the total uh, before tax or after tax? Also, what happens if the total order is exactly $35? Exactly. And those questions that Preeti is asking can lead us into an offset of behavior-driven development known as specification by example. This allows us to take the behavior that we just described and split it up into specific examples so that there's even less misunderstandings with the team. So let's take a look at these examples on the board. Given I have items with a total cost of $49 in my cart and I have an account with the website, when I checked out, I expect a shipping charge of $0. The second example, given I have items in the cart of $17 and I have an account with the website, when I check out, then I expect a shipping charge of $5.99. Being very specific about what's in the cart, what the outcome of having that amount in the cart is for the shipping cost. And we're also defining one thing that was missed in our behavior, and that is having the account on the website. The team must have missed that when they wrote the behavior, but now that they're writing a specific example, they've got that in there, so it's already helping. One of the best tools to help you with this is to create a shared language for your team to understand this. In this example, the word total can mean many different things. For example, does the total include tax? Does the total include all items in my cart or just one? This is an example of how having a team understanding can directly influence your actual behavior. The team, meaning your business, your developers, your QA, and anyone else on your Scrum team should come to a common understanding of what that word means. We might even choose to call this the pre-tax total if that's what it really describes. Exactly. And that common understanding that you do come up with, you can write it down in a shared dictionary. So that way, if you ever have any other questions about that word or someone miscommunicates it but on their own within one of these examples that's written by the team, you can point to that shared dictionary and say, we've already uh, explained that word in this dictionary and they can refer back to it. And the shared dictionary also helps with onboarding new members to your team. Even if they don't have the best understanding of the team yet, they can refer to these documents and have less miscommunication than they would if they didn't have any documentation before. That's great. So step one is to define very specific behaviors that we expect our system to produce. Step two is to illustrate this using multiple examples of what that behavior actually is. And step three is to create a shared language amongst the team of what all the words in these examples mean. Exactly. And if you need help implementing these steps by Red Hat, you can go to your exi existing account executive or go to redhat.com services to learn more. Thank you.